Welcome, welcome everyone. As a reminder, this presentation is being recorded, so please turn your videos on if you'd like to be recorded. Dr. Lake, take it away. Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the first event of the spring semester, our third since the initiative was launched last year. As we enter the second year of this inspiring series, it's helpful to reflect on where we've been, what we've accomplished, and where we go from here. Before our inaugural event back in February 2021, I spoke a bit about art as a form of human expression, how it has the power to open minds, to encourage empathy, to breed understanding, and to move people to question the status quo and fight for change. It has toppled dictators and inspired revolutions, raised voices, and saved lives, given power to the powerless and purpose and direction to billions around the world. Such modes of expression are more important than now now more than ever as we enter the turbulent third decade of the 21st century. By using art as an innovative medium for awareness, the artists and student ambassadors featured in our series become advocates, challenging the biggest, biggest issues of our time, from sculptures addressing systemic racism to murals celebrating indigenous communities, public art is making a real world social impact that deserves to be celebrated. The initiative serves as a platform for artivists, presenters, and student ambassadors to share their work, to inspire, and to challenge the audience to engage what we call their sociological imagination, to see the world through fresh eyes. Through multimodal events, presenters have shown how art, research, community outreach, and other creative endeavors serves as a means to transform the status quo. Over the year, over the past year, participants ha have had the opportunity to engage with community activists, faculty, staff, alumni, and students from Adelphi, Teachers College, Columbia University, Sing for Hope, and other institutions in the region. It is my honor to now introduce the co-founder and co-executive director of Sing for Hope, one of our artivism par partners, Camille Zamora, an internationally acclaimed soprano, Ms. Zamora has appeared with collaborators ranging from Yo-Yo Ma to Sting with ensembles, including Lim the London Symphony and Glimmerglass Opera and in live broadcasts on NPR, BBC Radio, Deutsche Radio and Sirius. A graduate of the Juilliard School, she has been recognized by the Con Congressional Hispanic Caucus and named one of CNN's most intriguing people, New York One's New Yorker of the Week and one of the top 50 Americans in philanth philanthropy by town and country, a regular contributor to the Huffington Post, Post and a leading voice in the artist as citizen discussion. Camille has performed and spoken at Fortune's Most Powerful Women's Summit, Skoll World Forum, Aspen Ideas Festival, and the United Nations. Welcome, Camille. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And it's such a joy to be here to kick off another incredible season together of artivism. Uh, Sing for Hope, we are often best known here in New York City uh, for our flagship program, the Sing for Hope Pianos, New York City's largest recurring, annually recurring arts project that is about music and art for all. And today I'm so honored to introduce a dear friend of mine who is a Sing for Hope board member. Cassandra Diggs is gonna share some sort of keynote words to, to set the tone for not just today, but for the whole season ahead of us with all of the wonderful artivism conversations to come in the many months ahead. Um, I want to actually uh, quote an article uh, by McKinsey um, about Cassandra, because I think it, it tells you a little bit both about her vision and brilliance, but also about just her warmth and um, just sort of relatability. She's just one of these people who is always there for you and that you can talk to even as she is going about her daily life, changing lives. So uh, with no further ado, when Cassandra Diggs first joined the Council of Fashion Designers of America in 2001, little did she know that she would become its first black president 19 years later. Her entry into fashion was atypical. Diggs first studied criminal justice in college and then accounting in business school. She also worked as a sales associate at Macy's, navigating school and work as she considered her future. A career in the fashion industry wasn't something she sought out. It's something that I happened upon, she says. But once there, I enjoyed it and decided to stay. That is an understatement. She has 
created massive change already in her tenure as president and prior to that, of course, as CFO. And um, I think, you know, we'll let her, her obviously speak for herself, but I, I want to just uh, share one more quote to, to set a bit of a tone here. These are Cassandra's words, and she says, there's room for everyone. There's opportunity for everyone. We don't have to dismiss people and keep them out. We just need to create more lanes. So friends, today it's my pleasure to introduce Cassandra Diggs, president of the Council of Fashion Designers of America and a proud Sing for Hope board member, Cassandra Diggs. Hello, and welcome to the power of art for social transformation. Today's inaugural Spring Artivism event is presented by Adelphi University, Gottsman Libraries and Teachers College of Columbia University, and Sing for Hope. I'm Cassandra Diggs, President of the Council of Fashion Designers of America and a very proud Sing for Hope board member. I'm truly delighted to have a few moments to thank you for your attendance at today's Artivism event as well as to applaud all of the talented creatives who use their art as a catalyst for social change. I believe that understanding the significance of creativity is extremely important because creativity is the most universal language we have in helping to provide voice and vision for a harmonious society where all of civilization has access to resources and can harness their happiness. Our creative imaginations help amplify the collective problems of the world in order to spark innovations that lead us to safer and fuller lives. Creativity, despite even those of us with natural abilities, is a rigorous endeavor that requires immense practice and dedication. And those of us who accept the magnitude of the effort and remain committed are thoroughly rewarded by engaging our own humanity and becoming more of our truer selves. Creativity and its interconnected relationship with activism are more multifaceted than I can expound on in these few minutes. However, to further echo my sentiments, I recite this abridged quote from James Baldwin. Quote, the precise role of the artist is to illuminate that darkness, blaze roads through the vast forest to make the world a more human dwelling place, end quote. On that note, I again thank activist creatives everywhere for harnessing their talents and bravely accepting the responsibility of further humanizing our existence. Wishing you all a great day. Take care. Professor Arji, back to you. Thank you, thank Ms. you. Mora, for the thank wonderful you. introduction. Yes, thank you, uh, Ms. Mora and um, the keynote speaker. Thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, when we started to plan the spring season, we wanted um, a design for the spring poster. So we put placed word out there and we reached out to our network all over the world, uh, one of which is um, Ring from Greece. And we thought how interesting would it be if they um, put this out to their students. Um, I have to confess, at the time, I did not realize they were very young students. I thought they were maybe high school, right? Uh, they were, in fact, kindergarten aged four to six. Um, I don't want to say too much. I want to uh, give it over to the ring team, uh, Despina, Sakulo Yorga, um, ring president, Maria Zguru, a uh, ring general secretary, Garifaya Terizaki, who was the teacher for these students, ring member and teacher of the class that designed the 2022 Artivism poster. Uh, Reggio Inspired Network of Greece is a nonprofit organization which aims at bringing together parents, educators, artists, and organizations, both national and international, who are interested in the pedagogy inspired by the Reggio Emilia philosophy. The panelists will discuss Ring and the story behind the artwork created by the students in the first kindergarten of Gargalliani, Peloponnesos, Greece. Uh, take it away. It's my turn. Okay. Um, I am Despina Sakulogeorga and I am the president of uh, Regio Inspired Network of Greece. I am also a preschool teacher in the public educational sector for at least 15 years. 
Um, it is our great honor to be partnering up with the Artivism of Adelphi University in the creation and the promotion of the poster that will accompany all virtual events of spring summer 2022. Argin Carolina, thank you very much for proposing this cooperation between Artivism and Ring. Um, um, Garifalia Terizaki, thank you for being an active member of our network since the beginning. You are an inspiration to all of us. Um, the amazing work with your students gives them a powerful voice that can be heard not only nationally, but also internationally, and this is so empowering. Um, can I say some things about uh, the setup of the, of, of the ring? Of okay. course. Okay, uh, when, how, and why was our network set up? As uh, said before by Argy, the Radio Inspired Network is a non-profit and non-governmental organization, which was set up um, on uh, Saturday, uh, 15th of February uh, in uh, 2020. Uh, at the gallery of the book in the art and speech room at the center of the Athens. It was set up by um, private and public uh, sector professionals who are interested in the Reggio Emilia inspired practice. Professionals who study and support uh, the children every day and, its, and his overall development. Professionals such as teachers, atelierista, psychologists, uh, early years educators, as well as parents. Uh, the establishment of our network came in a period of uh, re-examination of the already existing uh, educational and socio-cultural values, um, in a period of enrichment of the existing educational programs, as well as in a period of uh, search for new educational practices. Which are the goals of our network? First of all, um, according to the articles of our association, our first goal is to build bridges of communication and cooperation between the pedagogy in Greece and that of Reggio Emilia um, through the Reggio Children Institution. Uh, it is uh, worth mentioning that uh, the Reggio Emilia philosophy is the most known um, pedagogy which uh, brings the, the arts uh, in the foreground uh, from, the, uh, from the early years by having an atelier in each uh, school and in each class um, uh, for the children. Um, our second goal is uh, to develop uh, fruitful dialogues between all interested uh, parties and communities here in Greece. Um, to support the implementation of relative educational practices, to organize training seminars and workshops, to organize children's art exhibitions, to support innovative uh, educational practices, to conduct um, research and uh, publish uh, relative uh, research papers. That is from me. Marina, now is your turn. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carolina, whenever you're ready, I'm ready to. For the, the presentation first? The presentation, yes. So my name is uh, Marina Scuru, and I'm the elected general secretary of the ring. I'm also founder and manager of the bilingual region, which is regarding in Athens, Greece. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our journey so far in the ring, which is, hasn't been that long. It's only been two years since the birth of the ring. Um, right before COVID struck and changed our lives forever. So um, back at that time, as you can see from the photos, we have no mask and we gathered together in mission to create uh, this amazing network. Our, of course, all our events now have been virtual. So we started with the virtual dialogues on radio inspired pedagogy uh, to educators offered for free and repetitive. Uh, we came with atelaristas that work internationally and created works, art workshops uh, on uh, radio inspired uh, uh, practices. And our very uh, first baby, which was the, um, the first summit, uh, two day summit on radio media pedagogy, uh, challenges and possibilities in Greek schools. Uh, whereby we uh, we uh, had the cooperation of uh, the University of Thessaly, and we're so honoured. Uh, our board of directors um, had also created uh, online interactive workshops, um, and this shows that not only we hosted the event, but they actually uh, actively participated, and we couldn't have done it without them. 
and for 2022, we're already um, created our first, uh, for the year of course, a workshop is called the Atelier of Crystals. We hope this event is not going to be online, but we have children that will come and participate. And I will leave you now with the beautiful words of Amelia Garfetti. Our job is too difficult and too beautiful to be done alone. So if you want to join us this journey, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and website, radiogreece.com. Uh, thank you for having us. And I'll give the floor to my lovely uh, colleague, Garifalia Terizaki. Well, hello from Greece. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I, my name is Garifalia Terizaki. I'm a kindergarten teacher for 20 years and principal at the first kindergarten of Gargagliani. It's a small town on the southeastern tip of the Peloponnese in mainland Greece. In the fall of 2021, during the time when we created our artivism poster, our class was learning about human rights and naturally the arts were front and center in our discussions. Among other works of art, our class uh, was so inspired by the knotted gun that we even composed a poem entitled The Weapon of Peace. Uh, once the children had experienced art for themselves, uh, both individually and in teams, I thought of uh, deepening their experience through the art of collage. The kids uh, picked out magazines and tore out the parts that they felt were art artistic. Uh, their selections were pulled and together we chose the pieces we, we would uh, use for our collage. We discussed um, uh, what, what would be the best way to design our poster in order to get the artivist message across. Our poster's radial uh, structure and dotted uh, background uh, were inspired by Roy Lichtenstein's sunrise, which had left an impression of my pupils. And so the kids got to create their very own collage. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this project, uh, at times acting as a coordinator, other times as a cheerleader, and at all times as a student myself. I always say that my pupils are the best teachers I ever had. I intervened only when I felt the children needed my help to take um, their creativity one step further. Uh, you know, uh, most people think of kindergarten pupils um, as being little, but they are wrong. Uh, given the chance, uh, kindergartners can achieve big things, big things, believe me. Um, I thank you uh, wholeheartedly uh, for the opportunity you gave our school. My pupils uh, got an understanding of the communicative power possessed uh, by the arts, and we are now uh, a proud link in the artivism chain. Uh, I also thank Vespina and Marina for this cooperation. Uh, they are the inspiration of the ring team. Uh, it's an honor for me being a part of this team. Um, it is our honor and a great joy uh, to take part in this uh, spring's uh, artivism ventures. May they all be a huge hit. Uh, thank you very much. And before I close, uh, can I tell, uh, tell something in my language in Greece, in Greek? Can I? Of course, yes. Yeah, Ωραία. Ε, ναι, ναι. Αλλά λίγο στα γρήγορα μόνο. Θα το πω, θα το πω. <laughs> θα ήθελα okay. να πω ότι ε, να πω ένα μεγάλο αντίο σε μια σπουδαία καλλιτέχνηδα που, που έφυγε από τη ζωή, την Μαριανίνα Κριεζή, ε, η οποία ε, είναι στοιχουργός της θρηλυκής Λιλιπούπολης του Μάνου Χατζηδάκη. Μπορεί αυτή να έφυγε, όμως έχει μείνει πίσω της με την τέχνη της. Και ήταν μια πολύ ωραία συγκυρία να, με την αποψινή εκδήλωση να θυμηθούμε άλλη μια φορά μια άλλη δύναμη που έχει η τέχνη, που είναι η αθανασία. Δηλαδή η τέχνη έχει τη δύναμη να νικάει το θάνατο. Δεν μπορεί να νικήσει τις κοινωνικές ανισότητες. Αυτό ήθελα να πω. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Thank you very much. Και εμείς ευχαριστούμε and um, we would like to play a very short video um, in the children's words, um, a poem that they um, wrote uh, inspired by the knotted gun with the presentation of the spring poster. Go ahead. Thank you. Of 
πάσε κάθε πόλεμο, πόλεμο μακριά να διώχνει. Δεν του άρεσε πτά το θάνατο να γεύεται, ούτε τον πόνο να βλέπεις. Υπάρχει ένα γιγάντι όπλο που σταμάτησε να σκοτώνει. Φαντάζεται ότι στο, σκο... στο κόσμο σκορπίζει γράμματα, ρυθμούς, λουλούδια, χρώματα, χρώματα νότες και λουλούδια. Και χαρούμενα τραγούδια. Δεν είσαι το... και άλλα κλάματα να ακούει από τον τρόπο που σκορπά. Υπάρχει ένα γιγάντι όπλο που δεν σκοτώνει. Ονειρεύεται. Στην αγκαλιά κοιμάται τη Σιρήνη. Άγγλωμα ένα λίπτη. Το έκανα. Έργο τέχνη μόνο να μείνει. Δεν άντεχε άλλο πια. Με φιάλτε να χαϊδάβει. Μεγάλο στην παιδιά. Υπάρχει ένα γιγάντι όπλο που. Χαμογελάει. Όταν λέει το κόσμο, από κάτω τα πενά. Αλλά κουράζεται ποτέ. Στου ανθρώπου να θυμίζει ότι πρέπει παντού η ειρήνη να μυρίζει. Πρώτα είναι πια γαγιά γαργαλιά Round of applause. Come on, everyone. Let's show your artists and love for Miss Dick, Sing for Hope, and the Ring Group. Thank you all for being here today. Now, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Yanis Kaminis. The international artist born in Greece is inspired by people, ideas, and phenomena as they are evident in the sphere of conscious and unconscious life. He chooses colors to represent energy, dynamics, and the paintings of acrylic on canvas emerge as a flow of energy. Usually, each painting has a multifaceted meaning, unveiling archetypal signs and symbols, allowing the imagery to be positioned and hang from different sides. Each painting is characterized by free-flowing movement and multi-level 3D layers. The artist, Mr. Kaminis is in an altered state of consciousness during the process of painting through specialized meditation techniques and selects music to accompany the energy presentation of themes. Mr. Kaminis has a master's degree in marketing communications from the University of Westminster in the UK and a bachelor's in communication studies, communication, culture and media from Coventry University in the United Kingdom. He is the founder of, and check this out, you can write it down, it's www, you got it right there, www.yacmc.gr, and works as an international marketing communications consultant and trainer for Europe Aid projects founded by the European Union. He has worked as a professor for master and bachelor programs, and Mr. Kaminis is also a trained second analyst following the Ferdin School of Laconian approach in Northern Greece. An energy healer, body mirror technique by Martian Brofman, and an author. Mr. Kaminis has exhibited in galleries, art fairs, shows, exhibitions, and events in New York, USA, Cusco, Peru, Seoul, South Korea, Beirut, Lebanon, Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Kiev, Ukraine, and other parts of Europe. Please join me as we welcome Mr. Yanis Kamen. Hello, everybody. Great to be with you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very honored by the invitation of Professor R.G. Aguilarakis. Thank you very much for the introduction, dear Carolina Cambronero. And uh, I hope uh, the children have said it all. They said, uh, the gun dreamed it said as it slept in the arms of peace. And now this is a great connection to my presentation because who are we if we're not our own inner child inside? Who are we if we disconnect from our inner child? And how can we speak of communities if we don't address ourselves and others 
as people with a will to heal the children of the world. And these children also reside within ourselves. So my theme is, uh, my topic is uh, how art unites us all through the energy of creation and how we can provide a service to create a healthy community. I will start off by uh, my artistic journey, just to give you uh, an idea of how I started because I'm a self-taught painter who had to deal with, um, confront my shadow. And uh, I had to deal with uh, aspects of my inner world, which um, were at a dead end situation and that great conflict. And this uh, led me to find a way for everything to exist creatively and not destructively through the arts. And this is how I started to paint. And uh, I discovered that art is the way out, a way of expression for everyone to be able to release internal aspects and then community aspects to heal in that sense. So in that sense, any form of creation is ideal. We don't need the perfect circumstance. People think, oh, you have to have a degree. Oh, you have to have studied this and that and the other. But a little child knows how to paint, how to sing, how to dance intuitively and how to perform as well. So let our children be expressive in that way because our energy needs to express. And if it does not express creatively, it expresses destructively. Hence, we have all these psychosomatic symptoms, all the problems in our bodies and our lives. So we have to find a way, our own creative way of expression. We need courage. We need courage to create. And this is what the parents need to consider. How can we first in ourselves be creative? And then how can we help our children to be creative? because everything flows and this is definitely a good thing, but we have to make sure that the flow goes towards a creative direction. This painting you see on the right uh, is one of my darkest paintings, let's say, which presents, uh, it's called Revelation. Um, someone can see it as a figure, uh, a lady figure, and someone can see it as a face, it has two different readings, the face of death. It's the moment when we realize that we are alive, but we're going to die. So while we are here, what will I do? What will we do with our energy and our lives? So this is it. it it's been uh, presented in New York and it remains there for the time being. Moving on, how do we start? Where do we start when we are at a dead dead? or where are we when uh, we need support, support for the community or for ourselves? Where do we begin? We have to begin with the acknowledgement of what we have. Who are we as people? Who are we in our communities, within our families, our roots, our heritage? And how can we have, um, how, how, how can we progress uh, with a friend, uh, with, with the, the support and the help of our uh, friends, mentors, teachers, fans, and how can we find the resources to move on and to find the way to help one another? The first concert uh, where I presented my art uh, was designed by Nikos Safranas, a very good friend of mine, who came to our home and he saw the art. He said, Yanni, uh, you need to present your art. How about bringing your art to the foyer uh, for the presentation of, uh, of my concert? I said, uh, Nikos, this is wonderful, uh, but uh, I need to paint art for your music specifically. And this is what happened because he was performing classical pieces. I created paintings related to the music as a vibration uh, to create a visual denotation. As such, when I took the art to the foyer, the art director said, uh, you need to put these on stage because we want to 
uh, have an art interconnection and show the visual uh, supporting the music and uh, the singing. That was uh, the first event and it was a milestone because that was the point where my art became public for the first time. Uh, and I I'm very honored and very thankful to the international pianist, uh, Nico Zafranas, for his support in this case. And uh, he laid the hand and he helped me express myself to the world. So uh, I think we can all lend a hand and help people who we see, you know, are creative or are willing to take another step to express themselves. This led to many shows and many exhibitions internationally. Moving on, uh, I want to explain how my art is connecting with these themes of how we can all be <coughs> connected through it. This specific series uh, titled Time Travel is all painted with a red background. The red background is the vibration of the earth. So our first energy center, which uh, denotes that while we are in spirit form, we're in a physical world. In this physical plane, we need to exist with our spirits. As such, our whole system can be accessed through our center. Finding one center, like you see here in the painting, is like going through a tube, going to the center, and then being able to access any area of our lives. The light blue color represents uh, the willpower, thy will, God's will, which is uh, the fifth chakra energy. The dark blue represents the third eye, the third uh, eye energy, uh, which is to do with clarity and seeing clearly. The yellow or golden is our solar plexus, our power and also the divine power. And as they, as they are all, all, all coming together, um, the idea is that we need to be able to see that through our eyes, we can see, we can project ourselves to the world. So the idea of, of uh, what the salmon of Peru are saying, that the future is behind us, comes to explain how we are projecting ourselves to the world through our own uh, point of existence, the here and now. If we want to change something, we have to go back inside and find the strength to know ourselves better so we can heal ourselves or uh, take care of ourselves so we can actually connect with our spirit to envision a better future and a better way of being. When COVID came, because we are still going through pandemic times, I went to meditate into my favorite cave in Crete by the sea, which is a safe refuge with these beautiful colors, as you can see. And in this meditation, a specific uh, question uh, came to my mind uh, and um, a realistic one as well. How will we be safe in this time? How will we be safe uh, with COVID? The answer came that uh, we can be safe in high vibration. We can be safe when uh, we are tuning in with the higher aspects of our existence, with our values, with our core sentiments of, uh, of how we wish our world to be. And uh, the whole Indigo series came along uh, and the trademark of this series were four angels uh, of support especially for the time of COVID. So that's a message through the art. And this message, as I will show you later on, uh, actually came to a public space through Epimony Techni Persistent Art, which is a project run by Frisa Barzoka in the city of Thessaloniki uh, to put across the message of the art. 
in the urban landscape. <clears throat> My latest series is titled um, Ether. Ether is a connection with the higher spiritual plane where again, uh, there are some information there which is necessary for people to connect with. The messages of this series are as, ab as above, so below. So we're forgetting we are spiritual beings because we are in a crisis mode. Uh, however, we do have our intellect. We do have our power to pray. We do have our power to help one another. We can support one another and we can be realistic about what's going on at the same time. The other message is that, as you can see in this painting titled Spirit Weaver, is that the creator and the creations are part of the same energy, are part of the same material. So the more we connect with this dimension, the more we will see that the whole humanity is part of one organism, like a forest. Um, in the forest, when a tree is on fire, then the trees next to it are in danger. Equally, when a, a tree is blooming and growing, uh, all trees have the same, go through the same process. So we need to understand the power of one within the community as a way of a catalyst to affect others and to help through the team spirit to grow, to help people grow. This is a video where um, the Naisa Frena is presenting this series with her amazing music. So what does an artist need? And that includes the children. Or what does um, anyone need to become an artist? Well, from my experience and from the people I met, I understand that love, support, and understanding are crucial. And the next question is, what does any community need? Don't we need love, support, and understanding? And I will add one more thing to this. We also need team spirit to understand that we're all connected, we're not alone, one needs to help the other. So please, when you can, reach out and help another person in need. Be of service. I know the people who are here have the same mentality and I'm very proud and happy to be part of this group. Being of service, uh, led me to meet uh, Olga, Dr. Olga Alexakos, who is the director of Agapo, Association of Greek American Professional Women. They are doing amazing work supporting students with tuition fees, giving them scholarships and uh, doing huge programs to support the Greek community. And I'm very proud that uh, um, 
to have taken part in uh, Arapo's event. Um, Arapo.org, the place you can visit and you can contribute. It's in New York. The other institution I'm supporting th through my art is called FEI. It's the Education uh, Foundation uh, in Honduras. Um, children in Honduras are in great need of basic things like shoes and books and bags, school bags and uh, all that. And with very little money, like $20, uh, they can get all the equipment for a year. Uh, Faye has built uh, homes and schools there. And Debbie Kakanas, who is uh, uh, an inspiring, uh, amazing person, um, has a few words to say about it. Hi, my name is Debbie Kikanis, and I'm the Secretary for the Foundation for Education in Honduras, otherwise known as FEI. We are a volunteer organization committed to bringing high quality education to the children of Honduras. Our projects are supported by the generosity of individuals and corporate donations, such as the artist known as Yanis Caminis. Over the past several years, Yanni has donated paintings for us to raise funds to contribute to our projects. And the money we raise um, goes to school construction, supplying kids with shoes, books, and uniforms, uh, amongst other things. To learn more about our organization, please visit www.feih.org. And if you have any questions, reach out to me or Yanni. Thank you. Faye is also based in New York and uh, they're doing amazing work. Um, but do you need an organization to offer? Well, um, having spent three years working in uh, Ukraine for the association agreement of the country with the European Union, I decided I want to give something back, something back to the people and the country who supported me for three years professionally. And I thought it would be great um, to do uh, an exhibition and donating the money to children of the Zitomer uh, region who a specific shelter there. And my colleagues from uh, Association for, me, for You at the time uh, offered to support me. Uh, Miss Victoria Antonenko, who has um, placed a great effort for the organization, as Vetlana Rudenko, who has a few things to say about the event. Hello, I'm Svetlana from Ukraine. In January 2019, I helped to organize a charity event called State of Existence under the leadership of my colleague, Yanis Kaminis. And uh, this event gathered many people and we all bought beautiful paintings donated by Yanis. And what's important, there was this feeling of solidarity, unity, shared values. It felt like I'm supporting a good cause, same as other people in this room. I think that art can change things and art can influence changes in behavior, in people, in communities. Hello. I have uh, another recent project that went on in Athens in the project gallery organized by Art Hub Athens. Again, the same way uh, artists donated the paintings to support abused women and support the movement of Not Alone. 80% um, of the paintings were sold the first night. Uh, the exhibition lasted three days. So, the artists are there to offer the work for a good cause, and this is really touching and moving. It was a great event. Equally, uh, there are many events organized by artprofiles.net um, director, Dimitris Lazaro, and he has a short message. Hello from Athens, hello from me. I'm Dimitris Lazaro, and I'm the founder of the Greek cultural site, www 
art-profile.net. I'm here with you because I was invited from the great Greek artist uh, Yanis Daminis. Yanis, I'm very grateful that I'm here with you and uh, with all of you. So I have to say that I'm uh, organizing many art events, many art group exhibitions, and part of the proceeds are given for fundraising for a good cause. And uh, I'm glad that I see people embrace the efforts of the Greek artists, of the, the general of the artists, uh, for this for good cause. And uh, I hope uh, via this, uh, that uh, via the art, that art will make uh, the, the world a better, better, better place. Many thanks again. Greetings from Greece. Greetings to all. Closing up. I want to bring uh, Persistent Art, a Piedmont Technic, to your attention. During pandemic times in Thessaloniki, Teresa Barzoka decided that we need to do something about it. We cannot exhibit anywhere. We cannot have people turning up. So she thought, let's bring art into the city. And where else but the um, seafront, the, the most uh, famous walk of all people, who come to Thessaloniki. So we used, uh, as you can see, this glass uh, building to do an exhibition and uh, people can actually go and see the exhibits from the outside. And that was the first clever move to bring art into the city. Thankfully, um, given to us, uh, allowed to us by uh, Costadino Zervas, uh, the mayor, and uh, Maria Karagiani, the vice mayor, who has embraced uh, this action. Equally, we moved to Thessaloniki bus stops later on, again for the same purposes, and uh, the art went into the bus stops to give the message it has to give to the people. This is the main uh, square of Thessaloniki, just to show you a bit of grace as well. So this is my closing message. May art always unite us. Thank you very much for your time and energy. Feel free to connect on social media or online and I'm open to any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank yes, you. Um, just one minute. I, I don't know if we wanted to just take a couple of questions. It is now 2.47, maybe go to about 2.50 um, and then we'll go to Charles or would you like to wait at the end after Charles? It's entirely up to you. What do you think? I'm fine to take questions now. I'm okay, fine. so we can go for maybe, you know, three minutes or so for at the most because I know Charles has to present and then he has a class. <laughs> so any questions? I do know, uh, Yanni, that one of our uh, participants here, Katarzyna, uh, would like to uh, connect with you. Sure, please do. Any other questions? Okay. So since there are no questions, I want to thank uh, you once again. Uh, we do have one. We do have one. Okay. It says, uh, what are your plans for the future? Plans for the future. Um, the plans for the future are um, open to travel the world again, are open to exhibit internationally like I do, mm -hmm. are open to support good causes and the children, especially the children, mm -hmm. I believe. We need to support the children and give ourselves an opportunity to go on living as creative people. And this will bring happiness to our lives. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to also welcome our uh, European liaison, uh, Irini Ampomogli, who's with us today. Hi, Irini. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for presenting me. Yes, yes. Okay, so I, I would just like to say to Mr. Jans Kamin is that uh, his presentation was a very much needed boost of creativity and uh, 
uh, an appeal to community bonding and yeah and art it was very needed well, and in these times as well thank you very much i i meant to inspire a little bit and say you know people can actually do something even if there's you know not an organization there and nothing to be done you know we need pioneers and we need people who are doing things uh, in their out of their own heart, good heart, mm -hmm. and these things usually work and they grow further and further. Thank you very Thank you. much for the feedback. And we'll take one more. Antonios Vasamidis has his hand up, but did you want to ask something very quickly? Uh, hello, Yanis. Uh, congratulations for the nice presentation. I would like uh, to ask you what is the internal cause of creation or the internal motivation that makes a person? who is not previously an artist, to become an artist. Okay, this is uh, connected with our truth. We are all creative beings. We are all children inside. So no child is not creative. It is that they're told they should be doing this or that or the other, and this is the way they should exist with any family, within any family. So when someone connects with their inner child without, let's say, the external conditioning and allows itself to be creative in that way, um, then I'm sure maybe not everyone will like to paint, but some people like to dance. Some people like to sing, other people like to perform or write poetry. So there's not one form, there are so many forms to choose from. And I believe everyone as an adult has, at least as in from the point of, of the audience, you know, being, being in the audience, we all, you know, feel astonished by art, uh, one type of or the other. So equally, if we, if we take the step and we take a little step, then we decide, okay, uh, it may not have international or global value, my drawing. It doesn't matter, it has a value for me. And that's important because it's part of my story. It's my way to say I'm here and I'm alive and I can be creative for myself to begin with. I hope I answered your question. Thank you very much, Yanis. Thank you very much. And uh, we will stay on again. Uh, after Charles's presentation for more questions, even to the ring team. So Dr. Lake, introduce your student. Wonderful. I am so delighted to introduce Charles Herman. He is an Adelphi University senior majoring in criminal justice, focusing, focusing on social justice issues. In independent studies with me, he has focused his attention on race related topics, including policing practices in the BIPOC community, Mr. Herman hopes that his research uh, presented last spring at Adelphi's research conference sheds light on this, on these and other critical issues and creates real meaningful change. After graduating, he hopes to work at a nonprofit to advance the cause of equality and justice for all people. Mr. Herman is also the president of the Criminal Justice Club and has previously served as our vice president. He's also a member of the Environmental Action Coalition where he explores the issue of environmental racism and how to address it. Welcome, Charles. Thank you. Um, let me just share my screen real quick. Um, sharing sound as well. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, I hope to inspire you through this presentation um, and have a call to action. Um, my form of art is not necessarily through painting or drawing um, or poetry. It's more through my research uh, and the looking at the research of other scholars. So today I'll be talking about uh, socialism for the top, but it's ha harsh capitalism for the rest of us this is a discussion on the widening gap among wealth. And you notice I say melanin in America since race is a social construct um, constructed to divide society. It's really the biology and the melanin in your skin. Um, so let me just start. So the oligarch, so I'll be talking about the oligarchy versus everybody else. I'll be talking about the gap in K through 12 and college education. I'll be talking about the was the result of an oligarchy. Um, can democracy prevail? And white collar crime versus street crime, as well as what is needed to fuel an oligarchy. So, 
is America an oligarchy, a democracy, or is it both? Could it be both? According to Robert Reich, the oligarchy is defined as few to rule or to command. Um, and America has twice before be, been an oligarchy, once uh, just recently under Donald Trump. So in 2020, Robert Reich wrote this quote, a black man in Alabama was denied the right to vote in the last election because he owed $4 to the state. Meanwhile, Mike Bloomberg and Tom Steyer can dump hundreds of millions of dollars to buy the presidency. And America has democracy for the rich and oligarchy for the rest. So no one, A, no one should be able to buy the presidency, but also you shouldn't be denied a fundamental right um, in a, a democratic society, the right to vote, um, because you owe some money to the state. Uh, back in the 60s and way before that as well, there were things called poll taxes, and this is the modern day poll tax, um, scholars have noted. So, a diagram that I show also shows that if we divided the United States of America, the wealthiest country on earth, if we divide it by wealth, 30% would just get a few states, a sliver at the bottom, Florida, Texas, and Louisiana, um, while the rest would get Alabama, Mississippi, the Pacific Northwest, the Pacific, or the um, Northeast, the Northwest, the South. Um, so. It's a big issue in this country that needs to be resolved. Um, so the rise of the oligarch. Over the past four decades, the top has stolen from America. So we have these big corporations, Exxon, Apple, Google, Verizon, you know, it's Pfizer, um, because even though the vaccine is extraordinarily uh, effective and protective, and please get your vaccine and your booster, um, Companies have profited off of the pandemic. Um, a lot of CEOs and top executives have become even richer. Jeff Bezos, uh, the, uh, Tesla, all of these different companies, executives, uh, Elon Musk have, um, you know, profited off of the pandemic, and they've tilted the scales towards themselves. And I'll talk about what this meant a little bit later, and how the presidents have actually tried to. Um, tilt the scales in recent decades back towards us. And in the last 10 or so years, they've been tilted back towards the rich, especially with the last administration. Um, so when do when oligarchies fail because they are inherently unstable, um, when they're deemed illegitimate, they become vulnerable to what? Social unrest, Black Lives Matter. Uh, what happened with the murder of George Floyd, uh, the recent murder, I believe it was Amir Locke in Minneapolis uh, that just happened last week, so you may have not heard about it yet. Um, terrorism, January 6th, wars, revolutions, they depend on the systems of beliefs such as religion and other things, bribes to the most influential people, manufactured threats, and we had, we've had a lot of manufactured threats in the last you know, forever, um, such as the war on drugs with Nixon uh, and Reagan. But we've also had a, a rise in manufactured threats under Trump and other presidents. Um, so why is it bad to have oligarchy? Well, one, you get January 6th. I mean, that's the that's kind of what it all manifests into. Um, and we have poured salts into the nation's order soon, such as race relations, uh, fueling the hatred of immigrants. They're illegals, they're here to steal our jobs. Um, research has shown they're not. Uh, they pay their taxes. They <laughs> take the jobs that ordinary Americans don't want. Um, and, and they don't cause issues. Um, and so we've spread fear of communism and socialism and Three decades post World War II, Americans were able to save roughly 9% of their after tax income. But by 2008, it was only 2.6%. And remember, 2008 was our recession. Um, it was, I believe they said it was one of the bigger ones since the Great Depression in the 1920s. Uh, and not, greater than 40% of children that are born into poor households will be poor as adults. It's the cycle of poverty. 
And so President Hoover and Eisenhower and even Nixon taxed the rich. Um, I believe Nixon raised the capital gains tax from 25 to 35%. Uh, Eisenhower, I believe, raised the tax, and I, and I did do this research as well, uh, raised the tax rate to over 90%. So presidents have tried to tax the rich, and it worked. But because of money and politics, or business and politics and money and politics, this has kind of ceased to exist uh, in the last uh, couple decades or so. So racial discrepancy. So I say whites escape justice and blacks serve time. Um, not all whites escape justice. I'm not saying that only blacks get imprisoned, um, but is disproportionately tilted towards blacks. Blacks serving time for marijuana possession upwards of 20 years to life. Um, blacks serving time because they're trying to get their child into a good school. Um, but then you see the college scandal where white actors and actresses and celebrities were getting probation or fined or some other um, punishment. But it's not nearly, because they can pay it, it's not really a punishment to them. Um, and also wealthy parents are able to use words, music, poetry, games, come home, play with their kids, play basketball or soccer at five or six o'clock and put dinner on the table and not have to scramble and everything. Um, but disproportionately black and always poor parents, both white and black, um, have to work two, three, four jobs. It, this is the, again, the cycle of poverty. Um, poverty is the root of all crime. Um, as sociologists have stated. Um, and so you just look at wealthy as kids and wealthy families who attend prestigious schools such as Harvard or University of Chicago, and they're making upwards of $220,000 um, per year, which, and they remain in the top 90%. But regular Americans make around $67,000, and many of them make less than that. And that's not even enough to survive with. So let's talk about Donald Trump and the oligarchy. Um, he divided America. Um, this is a photo of them tear gassing peaceful protesters at Black Lives Matter protest in June of 2020. So the goal is to rig the system, announce it is rigged, and then Blame others, uh, and also cynicism, disruption, and uh, division. And he uh, did all of those. So, what is the duty of the rich, the powerful, and even the duty of us? What is the duty of us to call on our elected officials? Change the system, hit the nuclear button, disrupt the status quo. Um, we need to unrig this system. And we need socialism for the ordinary. And again, forget politics. Partisan politics, that's another thing that just divides us. We need to be brought together. Um, all right, I'll get back into it now. Thank you for your patience. Um, so we need to disrupt the status quo, um, hit that nuclear button. We need to acknowledge the need that we need to disrupt it all. We need socialism for the ordinary American. Um, and so I am going to read this quote. We set families up to struggle. We put every barrier we can in their way. We get the American dream to just be able to get by. That is not acceptable. Um, and so what do we have as a country in the United States? We have a broken health care system. We have a broken race relations. We have a broken criminal justice system, broken physical infrastructure, a broken education system, and a broken society. But we also have no paid sick leave, no guaranteed vacation, a broken labor system. Americans actually work more hours than the Canadians, Europeans, and the Japanese. And actually, I'll tell a brief story um, that I was told by us after we got cut off for some reason. Um, that I work at a market on Charter Island, New York. It's a small island on the east end of Long Island in the it, last summer. It was my first summer there. And 
I've worked around 55 to 65 hours a week, all summer long with, I think it was two days off at most um, every week. And overtime was great, but no one should be working that much. And I only got a 15 minute break um, during those hours. I worked from like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Same with Amazon, except with Amazon, we got no breaks um, because we had so many packages to deliver. So it's not just me, but those are two personal stories that I have um, that, um, yeah. So anyways, um, so rich versus poor America. Prisons don't prevent crime. Um, white collar crime is actually not punished to the same degree. Prisons don't rehabilitate, they just cause crime um, and is largely uneducated folks who are put into prison because poverty is the root of all crime. Um, and so from 1980 to 2000, there's the largest prison expansion known in the world. It was the height of the war on drugs, the uh, 1994 Clinton crime bill, tough on crime tactics. And as President Johnson said, there's something mighty wrong when a candidate for the highest office bemoans violence in the streets, but votes against the war on poverty, votes against the Civil Rights Act, and votes against major educational bills that come before him. So wealth inequality in America. We are the wealthiest country in the world, but in 2013, the poor 60% collectively owned 3.1% of the total wealth, and the top 1% owned 35% of the total wealth. Uh, Crime-prone teenagers, 16 to 19 years of age, 17.3% uh, of whites and 33% of blacks were all jobless. Um, so what are crimes against humanity that go largely unpunished? Well, we had the BP blast at the Texas oil refinery in 2005. And I want to talk about Deepwater Horizon in 2010 because I do remember that one. 11 were dead. They had a major fine uh, they were criminally fined, actually, but they were not criminally charged. And we have people sitting in prison for 20 years to life with uh, for weed possession, but you murder 11 people at an officer drilling site and you're not criminally charged. So there's a big issue with that. And actually, according to the OSHA, um, studies have estimated that approximately 50,000 annual U.S. deaths are attributable to past workplace exposure to hazardous agents. So democracy nevertheless will prevail. New Mexico increased spending by 11% and raised their minimum wage by 60%. Teachers were on strike and they won in Virginia, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Kentucky, and North Carolina. And conservatives have joined liberals to fight for criminal justice reforms. And I'll basically end with this before I have a very short three minute video. As the great Lewis, uh, Justice Louis D. Brandeis said, we can have democracy in this country or we can have great wealth concentrate in the hands of a few, but we cannot have both. So I just want to... All right, and so that was just Robert Wright, a brilliant scholar um, and Berkeley professor um, on his research. Um, and so we really need socialism. And so I just call on everybody here to call out the government officials uh, for hypocrisy and all of these other things um, to really be for the people, regardless if you're in Greece or if you're in the United States. It's not just the United States, it's a lot in the United States that's wrong, but it's nation, it's across the world, it's international. So I have one question and then I'll wrap it up and I'm sorry for all the internet issues. Um, can America, the land of the free and the home of the... Okay, he made it, he made it. <laughs> no, <laughs> so close. <laughs> very close, very close, but he did great. I, I mean, it was, it was great. We started very technology. young. Yeah, it's okay. We started okay. with very young and we're finishing up with Charles, who will be graduating soon, who was very brave to come on to this forum and present his research. This is Charles's research. Um, so thank you, Charles. If you have questions, maybe you want to put your email in the chat. Yeah, yeah. My, my wife, I cut out again before I could get to my contact me slide. 
<laughs> Maybe I changed my major and uh, create better Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> we do have one question for Yanni. It says, do you combine art and psychoanalysis or healing? Oh, yes. Actually, I've... Um... I have developed some workshops where I am, um, especially since we're talking about communities, I have developed a community workshop. I first did it in uh, Ukraine, which is helping people find, connect their inner child, find their unique gift, what they have to bring to the community, then express it and uh, use the art to define it as a totality. So uh, a piece of art is created in the end by all the participants. Mm -hmm. So. And then I also did um, a workshop in an international conference called the One Line Insight, mm -hmm. presenting, helping people to, to see how easily they can connect with their inner selves through drawing one line and find where they are on energy level, like their personal stories, how they are, you know, which are their priorities in the here and now, how they can connect with that and what they wish to change so on and so forth. So, Yes, there is a lot of uh, connection with uh, the different parts of my professional life and they, they come together. Thank you for the question. Thank you. I, would I, have, I have a question for Charles, if yes. I may. Yes, Charles, what a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. You're such an inspiration. We, we, we have to hear this again and again. Uh, to get it in into our skin, I want. Uh, I have a simple question for you. What is your, let's say, number one, um, let's say, move or goal or uh, you know, how would you like to to move forward as a person, knowing all these things, and if you have uh, some plans of how to change this world? Let's yeah, say. If um, you are the youngest generation. Yes. Yeah. So right now I'm actually uh, interning at um, the Jeffrey Deskovic Foundation for Justice, which uh, helps those who were wrongfully incarcerated. And actually, I'll be going to court on February 28th uh, to hopefully um, hear a case about someone who was wrongfully incarcerated. So that's the first thing I'm interning. Um, but after I graduate, I really want to go into uh, policy work um, and create policies that actually have the um, goals set in stone that will actually help the American people um, instead of helping corporate America. So I'm hoping to go into criminal justice policy reform and others um, to basically create that change and just be the one person it, it takes a village, but if one person does it and another person does it and another person does it, we can create change. So that is hopefully, I want to create that wave, uh, if that makes sense. So yeah, thank you for the question. And with that wave that you described, Mr. Harman, I would like to ask all of our presenters, um, what would be one takeaway for action that you will bring forth for our audience today? Is this for everybody or for me or? Uh, if you like, you can go first and then maybe yeah. we can we'll go to Mr. Kamidis yeah. and then to the ring uh, team. Yeah, sure. So, um, well, I want you guys to take away, I guess, from my presentation at least, is that you need to go out there and you need to fight. You, you, it's a fight. Uh, justice is always, true justice is always a fight. Um, and so just go out there and fight to upend the status quo and to fight for the ordinary person, to fight for the unhoused, to fight for the impoverished, just fight for your neighbors. And um, yeah, I mean, just go out there and fight for it. <laughs> and hopefully we can achieve it uh, within not too much longer. <laughs> so just upend the status quo, yeah. That's right. Mr. Kaminis, what about your takeaway? My takeaway is be free, dream, imagine how you want this world to become, what you want it to be, and start off by saying, okay, 
if I can be well in myself, I will only see good ahead of me. So take care of yourselves, everyone. <laughs> and this is starting point. <laughs> take care of your inner child. Thank you. Very true, very true. And for the ring team, if we all would like to say each one's takeaway, perhaps. Um, I would like to say that today, um, not only for the ring, but for the whole event uh, as it started, that my biggest takeaway was that together we can um, be better. <laughs> and um, I can also, like, um, uh, especially for the young children, uh, if we allow them to make mistakes and to experiment through art, then uh, this is the biggest um, gift we can give to uh, the young generation. That's right, that's right. Can I say? My, my takeaway is in line with Yanis uh, Kaminis, um, um, and that is uh, to hear, um, as adults, to hear our inner child, to hear our emotions, and uh, to think uh, rational, uh, because when we combine emotions and uh, rationality, we can feel the injustice which we see around us. And uh, when we um, when we are conscious over the injustice, then we can fight, fight as uh, Charles said before. And Garifalla, a mute. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, Desfina and uh, Marina uh, told everything. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, it's been a great honor uh, being here with you. Um, I wish uh, good luck in everything uh, you do. Health and um, let art change the world. <laughs> That's it. And thank you for all the hard work you did with the beautiful children. And thank, thank you, you very much. for that marvelous poster. Um, <laughs> so as you know, we had... Um, we have uh, here in Artivism, there is an Instagram, Facebook, and also um, a YouTube channel that you could follow us. Uh, this presentation will be there later on. So, Professor Arjun, would you like to guide us a little bit more on that? Um, sure. I put the links in the chat. The YouTube channel is Artivism Space, the number four shared humanity. I will upload this in the next day or so at most. Uh, thank you, everyone. We hope to have you all back again. Uh, Mr. Caminis, maybe in the fall, you can tell us some, you know, uh, something on your next project. Uh, the ring team, the same, and we will give you the full hour for each of you the next time. Charles, you too. We want to hear your next uh, research project. We'll have you back. Uh, thank you, Dr. Stephanie Lake, for um, giving us the opportunity to do this. If, if, if Dr. Lake didn't agree and have faith in us, this would have never happened a year ago, and we wouldn't have, what, like 30-something presentations so far. Um, thank you to all our um, our network around the world for um, joining in today. Um, let's see, what else? Did I forget anything? Um, yes, we do have an Artivism Zine newsletter that goes out monthly that will highlight uh, one of our presenters or students each month, so we will be reaching out to you. And then we will have an open call for a multi-venue exhibition, which will take place um, April uh, through May. Um, yeah, so if that's it, if anybody else has anything to say, this is your chance. Otherwise, hope to see you back next week. Thank you for thank your you. energy. Uh, thank you, Yorgo. And one more, uh, Irini from Greece, um, who is our um, European liaison, has connected us with other um, organizations in Greece that will be presenting this spring and later in the fall. So if anybody needs to contact Irini because of the time difference, um, you could reach out to her and um, maybe you can collaborate with her as well. Thank you. Shout out Come to Professor everyone. Argy. Let's hear it from Professor Argy. Come on, everybody. Hey, hey Argy. Woo! <laughs> All right, team. So we'll see you soon. Uh, stay connected and uh, keep changing. Like we said, be free, fight for it, and keep that child within, right? Mm -hmm.